All right, we're going to get started here again. So welcome back to the afternoon session of day two of the inaugural Canadian and Cold Regions Rail Research Conference 2021. Our next technical session is on risk and reliability. Our first presenter is Sophie Tian, who is a master's candidate at the University of Toronto under the supervision of Professor Ji Gong Li. Her research interests are in deep learning and time series classification. Welcome, Sophie. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, can you see my slide now? Yeah, it looks good. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, hi everyone. I'm, I'm Sophie, and today I'm here to present our work on the prediction of emergency response strategies based on combustion signatures from FTIR spectroscopy using machine learning techniques. Um, so this project is in collaboration with the University of Toronto and the fire safety team at the National Research Council of Canada, or NRC. The background is that in freight transportation fire incidents, the first responders routinely face unknown hazards when they encounter unlabeled generic freights. For example, there could be hazards that release toxins or explode when we use ordinary fire extinguishers. In these cases, the first responders may not have the knowledge required to re respond to the fire appropriately by selecting the right pro protection gears or fire extinguishers. As a result, the NRC is looking for a decision-making tool to scope hazards and assist the first responders. In this project, our goal is to analyze small smoke samples using machine learning to assist first responders who are on site when they encounter unlabeled burning goods. Here is our vision on how machine learning can assist the first responders. In a freight fire, if the goods that are burning are unlabeled or mixed, we would like a first responder from the fire uh, uh, to take a gas analyzer and hold it up close to the effluents emitted from the fire to um, collect some data for perhaps 10 to 15 seconds. Then the data collected from this gas analyzer will be automatically transmitted to a laptop to be analyzed. The data we get from the gas analyzer will look something like this. It will be a time series measurement of the concentrations of all chemicals found in the effluents. The graphs you see here shows the measurements from one particular chemical over time. Next, using this data, we would like to use a trained machine learning model to identify the fire hazards. This model should be developed beforehand so that we will only need the model to make a prediction using the new data sample we just measured on the site. And finally, with this machine uh, learning model and the fire hazards identified, we would like to display the corresponding hazard placards and the appropriate emergency response strategies to the first responders so that they can use the appropriate fire extinguishing method and the appropriate production gears. With this vision in mind, in this work, our focus is on collecting some data from the laboratory and using that data to train some machine learning models so that we can understand how well this approach could help the first responders. To achieve this vision, our team at the NRC burned some materials in the lab using a bench scale test setup cone calorimeter coupled with a Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy or FTIR gas analyzer. Basically, a fuel sample is burned in the cone calorimeter, which is used to detect, detect the fire behavior of a fuel sample under ambient conditions. And the F, a FTIR gas analyzer is connected to the cone calorimeter to collect the emissions of the fire. The FTIR is able to record the chemical concentrations present in the effluents throughout the fire. Using this setup, we obtained a total of 30 data samples from 20 distinct materials, where each data sample contains the chemical concentrations measured by the FTIR gas analyzer during the entire burning process of a material. And the table at the bottom here shows the list of the materials tested and how many experiments were conducted for each material. We see that 13 materials were tested once, four materials were tested twice, and three materials were tested three times. So given these 30 data samples we obtained using the FTIR gas analyzer and the cone calorimeter, now we'd like to train machine learning models to predict the hazard labels. The FTIR gas analyzer can detect the concentrations of 70 to 100 chemicals over time. In machine learning terms, this means that our data is in the form of multivariate time series. We need to make a binary classification decision 
meaning that our model should take in some example data and output a binary class label as a prediction. In terms of our classification goal, we would like to answer six binary questions for each sample of burning material. Is this sample flammable, toxic, explosive, water extinguishable, corrosive, and oxidizing? So given this multivariate time series data and the target values, which are yes and no for these six binary questions, we will train multivariate time series classification models to make the predictions. We conducted a review of multivariate time series classification models and decided to apply two top performing models in that field to our combustion signature data set. The first model is called canonical interval forest or CAF. And the second model is called the random convolutional kernel transform or rocket. According to our review, the model rocket is the state of the art model and it achieves a high level of accuracy while being so much faster than other models in the field. Um, as we mentioned before, we only have 30 data samples from the experiments we conducted. In the field of machine learning, models typically require much more than 30 data samples to learn the underlying patterns of the data. So our work here is a preliminary step to understand how well these models could predict fire hazards, and we will work on obtaining more data in the future. So we trained these two classification models on using the combustion signature data set to predict whether each hazard characteristic exists. Again, the hazard characteristics are flammability, toxicity, explosivity, water reactiveness, corrosiveness, and oxidizing. We used 70% of our data set, which corresponds to 21 data samples for training the model. And we reserve the remaining 30% of the data set or nine data samples as the test set to evaluate the performance of the machine learning model. The results from the two models, Rocket and CIF, are summarized in this table here. So each row represents a different prediction task, which corresponds to the six types of hazards we'd like to predict. And the columns shows, um, show the training accuracy, test accuracy, and percentage and the time required to train each model in seconds. Um, we see that we achieved perfect training accuracy for both models, meaning that both models learned to predict all 21 data samples in the training set perfectly. However, if we look over to the test accuracies, we see that the models can correctly predict some samples, but not all samples. This is an indication of overfitting, and it occurs due to the small size of the data set. For the test accuracies, for each hazard category, um, I put the model that performed better in bold. We see that rocket and CIF tied in three categories, which are explosivity, water reactiveness, and oxidizing. Rocket outperformed CIF in the categories um, of uh, flammability and, uh, sorry, uh, inflammability. And CIF outperformed rocket in toxicity uh, and corrosiveness. So overall, CIF achieved a slightly higher test accuracy across all the hazard categories, which is 80%, and Rocket um, achieved 76%. However, if we look at the last column, which is the time required to train each model, we observe that Rocket is roughly 1,000 times faster than CIF for all the hazard categories. And the, and the model Rocket only takes three to four seconds to run and to learn the underlying patterns of the data while CAF takes roughly one hour to run each model. Since SALT Rocket is only slightly behind CAF in, in the test accuracy, but a thousand times faster to train, we believe that the Rocket model is the superior model to use for our prediction task. And considering that the results we are obtaining showing here are obtained from a preliminary 30 sample data set, when we obtain a larger data set later, we expect the performance of both models to be improved further which allows us to provide better aids to the first responders. However, since we will complete the training for the machine learning models before using the models on the site of a freight transportation fire, ultimately we care about improving the performance of the model and providing more accurate decision support to the first responders. Um, in conclusion, as in this work, we predicted the hazard characteristics of fires using machine learning with very high accuracy. 
we proposed a preliminary tool for first responders to identify fire hazards and unlabeled burning freights on site. As for future work, we will work on connecting the ha hazard characteristics we identified to the emergency response strategies in the emergency response guidebook from Transport Canada. We will conduct a uh, collect more uh, combustion signature data using our FTIR gas analyzer and cone calorimeter to enhance the accuracy of the machine learning model and work towards providing better decision support to the first responders when they encounter unlabeled burning goods. Uh, that is all for my presentation. I have my acknowledgements and references here. Um, and let me go over to the chat and questions. Yeah, um, if anyone has any, thank you so much for the presentation, Sophie. If anyone does have any questions, just go ahead and throw them into the, uh, the Q&A box. Um, I can start us out here since we have a little, couple minutes. I'm, I'm just curious with uh, machine learning, such a, an interesting technology that is uh, kind of up and coming in our society today, especially in like the tech sector or anything like that. I'm just curious if, where, where do you see like the, the end goal of it with your specific work? So how do you, how do you determine like, okay, we've done enough with the machine learning that it's, we're, we're satisfied with it. I feel like it's one of those things that you can just kind of continually keep working on, right? Yeah, so, so that would be determined by the test accuracy from our machine learning models. And basically we would need to um, set a goal that we want to achieve. So if we have a larger data set um, and if we can achieve say like a 95, 98% um, accuracy, um, we may feel confident enough to apply it to the field in real freight firing scenarios. So this is, I think it's an issue about the, the risk, um, yeah. So, so do you see an issue with like, uh, let's say Transport Canada adopt or being willing to adopt those kind of uh, scenario or those, those technologies? I think eventually this is something that could be applied for sure, because even with a very small data set, we are already seeing um, pretty good accuracies. So when we train our models with larger data sets, I'm pretty confident that eventually we'll be able to apply it to the field. Awesome, thank you. I, uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat here. So I think we're going to move on to the next presentation. But thank you so much, Sophie. Thank you. Um.